Hello my fellow gamers, today I want to show you gameplay and talk about the features of Starport Delta, an interesting and at first glance simple space station building strategy game which turned out to be much harder than it looked. Just thought we'd drop in to help with the game of Pirate Pinata. I noticed it back in 2019, featured it on my list of upcoming games for 2020 and finally got to play it a little while ago thanks to developers over at Cloudfire Studios who have sent me a copy. The game version I'm playing here is 1.1 and it's been updated with new buildings, research map, new camera options and upgrades for the laser defense turrets. The first thing you will notice about this game is that it is quite static. This is something you can guess from the title since the whole gameplay revolves around a stationary space station which serves as a starport for a fictional human spacefaring empire. But this does not mean that the game isn't eventful. Since you do not go where the action is, it comes to you in the form of meteor showers, pirate attacks, electrical storms, radiation bursts and even space worm attacks. Against each one of these there are countermeasures and defensive actions you can take or specific buildings you can build and add to your starport like a defensive laser to shoot down the parts or a force shield projector to stop those meteorites. Now how do you finance such buildings? Well with space bucks of course, which you earn in several ways. There is the simple tax revenue from all the residents living in the special residential buildings and the main spaceport building, then there are the sales of harvested materials through trade deals made in the trade hub and special mini assignments which endlessly pile up on a starport's commander's schedule. This mini game of hide and seek which rewards you with space bucks or minerals each time you finish it, might look easy at first, but this is because you have a relatively small spaceport. In the later game however, it becomes a tall order to search through dozens and dozens of buildings to find a lost member of Cloudfire Studios or an escaped alien slave or even a slick thief. You can even choose what to do with these aliens or people once you find them on these mini missions. Give them a home at your spaceport or kick them out the airlock, even earning more in the process but increasing the risk a space worm will be attracted by all the flying ice snacks. This is quite a nice addition to spice up the gameplay and on that subject if you would like to see more management and simulation games with cool gameplay mechanics like these check out my video list of 13 such games coming out in 2021. The economy in Starport Delta is pretty straightforward. You have the mentioned space bucks and minerals. The primary way of getting more minerals is by sending out mining ships to the nearby mineral rich asteroids. These ships are created by building a mining depot and from there they'll do all the work. All you need to do is to make sure that the mining depot is in range of both power and oxygen. And that power and oxygen are created by their own respective buildings. Other buildings I have not mentioned are the food farms which provide food to the residential buildings in a small area around them, gardens which provide benefits and increase the tax revenue from residential buildings, retail plazas which give residents a place to relax and shop and so increase the starport's overall tax revenue. The research lab boosts the speed of research while the repair depot passively fixes all other buildings around it as there is a system of maintenance and repair for all the buildings which will get damaged from all the space hazards. Now if you have been enjoying the view of my own spaceport being wrecked by such hazards think about hitting that like button and perhaps subscribe to see more such videos in the future. All the buildings I have mentioned in this game require power so the generator buildings are essential. Most other buildings require oxygen since there are people working there while only residential buildings require food and entertainment. This interplay between buildings operating needs and their output for other nearby buildings creates a really neat grid on a hexagonal map around your starting spaceport building. The more kinds of buildings you add the more complex it gets and problems will start to mount as each time your building blows up it leaves behind wreckage which you cannot build on again. To make matters worse and the gameplay harder, as you research more technologies you will get access to the ability to upgrade buildings when you have 3 and later even 9 of them all bunched up tightly together. These clusters require perfect placement and a lot of space so once your starport area becomes riddled with leftover buildings it will get harder and harder to find suitable spots for these gigantic upgraded buildings. The upside of this is that they will give you a much larger range in which other buildings will benefit from their service. The game offers quite a few mods to play in, a basic tutorial, the campaign which is a much better tutorial but with the added benefit of a storyline, fully voiced characters including your own and all of them having quirky senses of humor especially the artificial intelligences. I am detecting high levels of enthusiasm combined with low levels of intellect.
The use of small words is advised. Then there is the sandbox with four variants. They go from a Zen setup, where you just build and aren't disturbed by natural or human disasters, and another three setups with increasing severity of hazards. They all offer exact goals the player needs to reach to complete them. There is also the challenge mode, which has the highest goals, but also the most challenging gameplay. At the end, you have the custom mode, which will let you manually define each setting and option for your game. From the amount of space bugs, the environmental and building details, to the frequency of space worm attacks. Now to be able to overview everything and organize your star base in more detail, you have a bunch of different overlays at the top UI bar where you can also slow down or speed up the time. The update 1.1 added new camera options which offer both a more cinematic view and a simplified top-down designer view. The developers have expressed a willingness to add, change or remove gameplay elements in accordance with the player's wishes and feedback, so if you end up playing this game, feel free to tell them your thoughts on Steam, social media or in their Discord server. As for the performance and stability, I have played the game for a number of hours by now and haven't faced any real problems. The music might be a little bit repetitive or maybe just not your style, so it would be a cool idea for the developers to add a space jukebox in the UI. So that will be my short overview of this game, I hope you have enjoyed it and if you want me to show off more of it, please tell me in the comments below. The cards on the screen will show you more games I have covered and which you might like to play. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!